So we're talking about a spiritual discernment that is referred to as bearing witness that will be so clear it can lead us. Everybody say spiritually discern. God is talking to us all the time. And so often people, you know, they'll, they'll uh, particularly a new believer, it's, it's a strange thing to know. We read in the Bible how God spoke to people, and we have this understanding. This, this, in the beginning, I used to think, you know, God would actually appear, and you would hear His voice audibly. Each person, they would hear God speaking. And because we haven't heard that in the last number of years, ever since we've been born, no one ever said, you know, you don't hear booming voices in that room and in this room. And you wonder, does God still speak? And for a long time, in, a, in religious circles, people would think that God doesn't actually talk anymore. And he used to do that in the old covenant, but not anymore. And yet Jesus says we have a new and a better covenant. We have a new and a better covenant. And if God was talking to His people under the old covenant, surely He's talking to us under the new covenant. And it's much more than just the written Word of God. The written Word of God is what's recorded of what God has said in times past. But God is still speaking to us all the time. And so maybe someone's given their life to Jesus and they're born again and wanting to serve God. And then they hear a Christian saying, and God told me and God led me and God showed me. And they think, I don't hear God. You know, I, I, all these other Christians, they all talk about God saying and God telling them, how come I don't hear? And we understand from the Word of God, as we've already studied so far, this is part three today, I really want to encourage you to get the past messages if you missed them, is that we find out from the Word that Jesus says you do hear His voice, which means He must be talking. Look at John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Lift your hand and say, my Jesus said that I, as his sheep, hear his voice. Did Jesus say that? Did Jesus say you hear his voice? Then how can I say I don't? So it's no longer I don't hear his voice because he says he does speak and I hear his voice. So if he says I hear his voice, I must be hearing it. So if I'm hearing it, and I don't think I was hearing it, but I am hearing it, then obviously what I'm hearing, I didn't know was Him. I have to learn to recognize His voice. That's why we're talking about it in that way. It's not how to hear God's voice, it's how to recognize the voice. Because He is already talking to us. It's not like, now that you're Christian, you have to first learn to hear God, then He will start speaking to you. No, he's been talking all the time. The very fact that you are saved proves to me that you have already heard his voice. Because no one can get saved on their own just because they decide to get saved. The Bible says no one comes to the Father except he draws them. So God is always drawing people to him. Then he arranges for intercessors to pray and intercede for you. To remove the veil and the scale, the Bible says we were blinded by Satan from seeing the gospel. All of us before we were saved. And so because someone was praying, that blindness was removed so that God could breathe in our heart, you're my child. And you heard that and you said, I believe. Now you may not have realized you'd heard God's voice. But the fact that you gave your life to Jesus, you responded to something. It may have been an invitation by the pastor, but how you know, I know for myself, I sat in many altar calls and forced my hand down. <laughs> Never mind, put it up. It was, I am not doing this. Come on, how have you been there? So it wasn't because the, the altar call that caught me was done by a certain pastor in a certain way. No, it was God had wooed me, had called me, and, 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 and brought me in. And hearing that, we responded. And so the very fact that you saved today says that you already responded to the voice of God. Say that the fact that I'm saved proves I've responded to the voice of God. 
Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 12, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak of His own authority. Say this, the Holy Spirit speaks. So if the Holy Spirit's speaking, it's evident that we will be hearing. So Jesus leads us, and He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Say that, Jesus speaks to me through the Holy Spirit. He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. And all things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said, He will take of mine and declare it to you. So the Holy Spirit is telling you what Jesus has said, and Jesus says what He says He got from the Father. So can you see the line of communication? Say this, I am hearing... My Father speak, because Jesus only says what the Father says, and the Holy Spirit reveals to me the things of Jesus. So say this, so therefore, I'm hearing the Father about my future. Isn't that exciting? You can know your future. God can reveal to you what you need to know. And so we've been having a look. How does this happen? And we heard some terminology come up in the Scriptures. We saw in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Say this, I am led by God. So what does led mean? It means that He's going ahead of you and you following. He knows where to take you. You stay close to Him. You will arrive where He wants you to be. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. In verse 16, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So you, that's what you've already experienced. You know that you're born again. There's no one that can take that from you. I could not talk you out of your salvation. And so, if someone is spoken out of their salvation, it's because they have chosen to ignore the leading of God and listen to the voice of the enemy. If someone backslides, they've listened to the voice of Satan more than they've been listening to God. But someone that desires to stay and serve God, you have a foundation within you that says, I know that I know that I know that I know God loves me and I'm born again. And I, no one can take that from me. What's that? That's bearing witness. Everyone say, bears witness. So yeah, we see the Holy Spirit leads us. How does He do that? By bearing witness. And then we saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and if you look at verse 14, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Everybody say, spiritually discerned. So we're talking about a spiritual discernment that is referred to as bearing witness that will be so clear it can lead us. Everybody say spiritually discerned. And that's where we ended off last week. We know that when we talk about spiritually discerned, this is not the discerning of spirits and as the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. This is talking about the ability to discern, to be able to understand what God is saying. And so when we say spiritually discerned, it's not mentally discerned. It's not something that you will hear with your physical ears. Say this, the voice of my body is feeling. Remember we did that experiment. Those that weren't here, just touch someone next to you. Did you feel that? How many of you feel when you touch someone? That's your body. That's one way of speaking. So the, say that the voice of my body is feeling. The voice of my mind is reason. Now the voice of my spirit, say it. The voice of my spirit is intuition, a peace, a knowing, discerning. 
So we need to learn how to recognize that. How does that work? How does bearing witness work? Well, have a look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Now that word rule in the original writing is in Greek. It's Strong's number 1018 for those that are taking notes. 1018. It is the Greek word brabio. Brabio. B-R-A-B-E-U-O. Everyone say brabio. You speak Greek. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> what does brabio mean? To govern. To be an umpire. To decide, determine, to direct, to control, to rule. That's where the translator used the word rule. Let the peace of God rule. But notice the context, the, the, the meaning of the word the one that I want to pull out there is to be an umpire. To be an umpire. It's a decision maker. It's what decides. Now, how many of you watch sport? You know in a sport they have an umpire or a referee or a judge. Now, what's the reason for the judge there? Do you notice the judge or the referee or the umpire? They actually don't play the game. But they in the game with you. If you notice, a referee will run wherever the players are. Why? Because they want to make sure the game keeps going. The, the players are making the decisions. They keep deciding, do we go left, do we go right? Do we throw, don't we throw? Do we dive, don't we dive? They are deciding all the time. Now, you know that that game is governed by certain rules. And those rules must be adhered to for the game to work. If you don't keep the rules, the game doesn't work. You can't have someone trying to play uh, soccer with rugby rules. Because you're the only guy trying to pick the ball up, and you can't understand why the referee keeps blowing his whistle. You're playing soccer with rugby rules. So the referee is there to make sure everybody plays soccer so that the soccer game works. So what does he do? He monitors it. He watches it. He checks everybody, watches their attitudes, watch how they run, watch where they keeping the rules. But you notice most of the time he just does nothing. He just runs around watching, watching, watching. But if someone violates or goes in the wrong direction, does something incorrect, what happens? He blows his whistle. And the moment he blows his whistle, do you notice a guy can be sprinting? When that whistle goes, he'll stop. He won't go any further. You can keep running and kick the ball in the, in, the, in, the, in the net and cheer. You're the only one cheering on the field because everybody else heard the whistle. That, that goal doesn't even count because the whistle went. The referee stopped the game. And the moment he stopped it, everybody's eyes went to the referee. What? And he has to say, over here, this was the wrong move. And he'll correct it, bring everyone back to that point. And from that moment on, he'll direct the game in the way it needs to go. And then what does he do? He blows his whistle and he steps out the way and off they go again. Now he's not involved anymore. Now I went into detail to explain that even though many of us know what it is. Because it's very, very, very similar the way the Holy Spirit leads us. It's not like God's going to step in and say, now I want you to get up at 7.05 tomorrow and then get into the white car and drive down to the mall. And, and Sometimes we do get clear instructions, but it's going to come over a process of time. But most of the time, when you're hearing God, it's as if the referee is watching you. You are playing the game. God calls you. You're saved. You're born again. And now you play. Now you're living the life of a Christian. And God is not making your every decision for you. You can decide if you want to wear the red or the blue top. It's entirely up to you. 
Now, God can, if He needs you, you may be meeting someone today, and He knows if you're wearing a blue top, they'll listen to you quicker than if you were wearing the red one. That can happen. Then you say, I want you to put on the blue top today. But not every day. God, which color today? God, which are you with me? No, he's saying, go ahead, live your life. Paint the house color you want to paint it. Buy the car you want. Live your life. You can play. Go ahead and enjoy. God's given you a mind to make decisions. Some people are too afraid to move because they haven't heard from God. Uh, young people particularly, we, we, we don't want to, look, because who's my husband? I won't move. That's not my husband. I can't go out, I can't go out with that person. I can't go out with that person because they're my wife. That's not my wife. My, God, who's my wife? Who's my wife? Who's my wife? God, who's my wife? Who's my wife? <laughs> Are you getting this? Because if we get stuck there, then even if your wife walked right past you, you say, who's my wife? Who's my wife? Who's my wife? Who's my wife? And <laughs> no. God, you have a desire, isn't that right? Within you is a desire. You know what you like. When I saw my wife, it was on a blind date. I met Janine on a blind date. And I wasn't even born again. But when the door opened, I knew. That door opened. I I have met the woman of my dreams. That wasn't Holy Spirit and, and, and angels and organ music. And God said, this is your wife. <laughs> Did that happen? <laughs> no. So God gives you the ability to make decisions. There's a certain person you were attracted to. You, those that are married, you married your wife, your, your husband. Why? Because you were attracted to them. Wasn't God said, this is your wife. Well, I don't really like her, but if God says he is, then. <laughs> is that what happened? No, it's the person you liked. You were attracted. So what's God saying? Live your life. I've blessed you with every blessing. I've given you a mind to think. I've given you feelings. You you live, you know, live your life. Make your decisions. Enjoy your life. But here's the thing. He has an end plan for you. He has a, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you for a future and for a hope. And so there are certain critical life-changing decisions in life. So whether I buy this car or buy that car is irrelevant. But if I'm about to buy a car that has a defect in it and it could break and it could have an accident and my family would be killed if we were driving that car and I'm about to pay for it, the referee blows. Just lay your hand on your heart. Say, today I've heard the Word of God. That Word has brought faith to my heart. And I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm a hearer of God's Word. And as a hearer, I'm also a doer. The peace of God rules in my heart. I hear God's voice. He is my umpire. He's my referee. He's my judge. He knows when I'm successful. And He knows when I'm about to make a wrong decision. And He will always blow the whistle. I have that unction. I hear that unction. I hear his voice. I am sensitive. I discern. I'm able to read and understand what's happening in my heart. As I am in peace, I hear his voice. And that peace enables me to make the right decision in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, family, it's Friday and it's giving day. And my dad has an amazing message that he'd like to share with you on partnership and how your partnership with this ministry is impacting so many people around this world. So please enjoy this message from my dad. What an awesome week of study we have had. You know, the Word of God brings life to us. And we understand that in that life, we are able to live the life that God has designed for us. He leads us, He guides us, and He shows us. He is a generous God. He's a God who loves us. 
He has given to us generously. He gave us life. He's blessed us with every blessing. He supplies every need. He delivered His Word to us. He's given us His Holy Spirit. We serve an awesome, generous God. Now, as sons of God, as being born again of God, we live this generous life. Just the same way He leads us in how to pray for people. He leads us in the call that we're in. He leads us in the families that we are in, where to live, guides our lives. He also shows us how to live the same life that He is as a generous God. That's why when Paul wrote here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, you have a look at verse 6, it says, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So through the Word of God, He's revealing to us the principles of the kingdom of God. That if I put one seed in the ground, I can only expect one bush. If I put 10 seeds in the ground, I will get 10 bushes. It, it's, this is the proportion that your seed will always produce according to this amount of seeds. Your harvest is determined by the amount of seeds that you sow. And God wants to reveal to us that we can live a generous life by being led by Him through the Word of God. So He shows us in verse 7, So let each one give. So Paul uses the instruction of sowing seed and then links that to our giving. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Why? Because He is a giver. When we are cheerful givers, we mimic the life of God. We become as He is. And He is a giver, generous giver. And so he's, Paul is saying, yeah, don't be stingy or sparingly. It's revealed through the Word of God that if we live a generous life of God, if we live the way God does, not grudgingly of necessity because we have to, not because we are pressurized by anybody. And then he says, verse 8, when we live that way, we live generously and we give generously. God loves that. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. And you always have all sufficiency in all things and have an abundance for every good work. So if we want to see the generous life of God manifesting, we live generously. And so once again, when it comes time to sowing God's seed, as you know, on a Friday, this is our time of giving. I will never, ever pressurize anybody. I don't want to ask anybody for anything. It has to be as you purpose in your heart. But I do encourage you, be generous. And if God has called you to give into another ministry, do that. Give where God leads you to give. For those that have sown into this ministry, I want to thank you. We appreciate it. Because of your generous giving, we can carry on the work of God and God supplies every need. And I can stand in agreement with you according to this word of God. If you've sown generously, you're going to reap generously. So let's pray that prayer right now. The details are on the screen. If God has led you to give today, you can do that online through any of our facilities. Let's pray. Father, I pray for my dear friend and my partner as they sow their seed today. According to the promise of your word, they are sowing generously. And as they do, they reap generously. And you make grace abound towards them. They always have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. Now, my God, you supply all they need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We believe that and thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God, my friend. I believe that prayer is answered and it's done. Welcome back, family. If you'd like to partner with us, you're welcome to just zap the barcode that is there on the screen or you can even go to our easy to use giving facilities and be a part of what the Lord is doing here at Allenbag Ministries. Does God still speak to us in these days? And if He does, why don't I seem to hear His voice? Family, God is speaking all the time. He's talking to us all the time. And I know sometimes people say, I wish I could hear the voice of God. And the point is, He is speaking. He is speaking. Someone says, but I never hear Him. No, He is speaking. But we need to learn to recognize that voice. 
In this series, Alan Back reveals that God is speaking to us all the time and how you can learn to recognize His voice. God wants you, yes you, to know and to recognize the voice of God. In this series, Alan Back will help you with very practical tools that will help you to recognize the voice of God so you too can be led by Him especially when it comes to critical decisions you're needing to make in life. God is warning you ahead of time. He's telling you how to navigate life. He's way ahead of what the enemy's got planned. No matter what the enemy's devised for your life, God has already ordained for you to have the right answer. And He's talking to us and releasing that in our lives all the time. Visit us online to get hold of your series or contact us here at Allen Back Ministries offices. Get hold of your series and get hold of powerful tools so you too can learn how to recognize the voice of God. Well family, it's weekend and I just want to encourage you, go to church and go be a part of what the Lord is doing. And if you are here in our area, we have some amazing services coming up. And please come be a part of that. Come and say hi to us. We'd love to see you and we'd love to have you here. We also have a youth service every Friday night from 7 to 9. So please come and join us. You are so welcome to come be a part of what the Lord is doing in our young people's lives. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Joshua Bag, And remember, Jesus is Lord and life is a choice. Choose life. We want to thank you for your partnership with Allen Bag Ministries. When you connect with us, you are part of many receiving their salvation. You are part of many being touched by God's love. And you are part of many believers being equipped to accomplish all that they are called to do. Know that when you partner with us, you will have access to God's powerful truth, practically taught by Dr. Allen. Know that you are being prayed for over every day and know that we are in agreement with God's promises manifesting in your life. When you partner with us, you will also receive a partner pack that will both build your faith and give you understanding of the difference you are helping us make. Thank you once again for your faithful support and prayer. We have seen so many lives touched as a result of your partnership. If you're not in partnership with us yet, join us and make a difference in this world. The message you've been watching on today's program is part of an entire series that Alan Bag recently taught at the Bay Christian Family Church. You can now get hold of this entire series by making contact with us here at Alan Bag Ministries. Order your series and have all these messages available to help encourage and build your faith.